you very, very much, General Armstrong. Thank you, tourists. <laughs> very thrilled to be here. I am in Alaska, ladies and gentlemen. So much for your early warning system. <laughs> but I'm happy to be here with you, ladies and gentlemen, of Fairbanks, you walruses, seals, and caribou. It's a state now, and everybody's got equal rights. <laughs> Alaska now has the only senator who wasn't seated, he was mounted. <laughs> yes, dear, Alaska is officially a state. Now they can send you here without a court-martial. <laughs> but Alaska is beautiful at this time of the year, when the frost is on the PX and the mucklucks are in bloom. <laughs> well, the weather's been fine here. The other day, the temperature shot up to 30 below. And of course, the fellows here are very weather conscious. They're always watching the thermometer. It's the only thing up here with a figure. Bob Hope, Alaska, 1959. The USO Show, a sight that has become familiar to many Americans. But what many Americans do not know is that today the USO is doing the same important job it did in World War II and in Korea. United States Army presents The Big Picture, an official report produced for the armed forces and the American people. Now to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. Today our world is being shaken on all sides by a titanic struggle involving all men and all nations. This struggle initiated by the communist bloc runs the full spectrum from athletic contests to threats of all-out war. It is a conflict characterized by the adversary's employment of total and powerful psychological, economic, political, and military means to accomplish a single objective, world domination. As a result, selective service in this country is now in its 20th year of drawing into the military thousands and thousands of our youth. This is a circumstance observed by no other generation in America during peacetime. To the hundreds of thousands whose civilian lives have been temporarily uprooted, whose education must be deferred, this nation owes more than lip service. Without their willingness and their ability to man the modern weapons of defense, no policy from Washington can be enforced to the utmost. Thus our way of life, our homes, our loved ones. Our very existence depends greatly upon the young people in our armed forces today. Maintaining their morale becomes then a responsibility that must be shared by the civilian community. Through the USO, the United Service Organizations, the American public has accepted that responsibility. Today's big picture will show how well that job is being done. To the extent that you support the USO program, it is, in a sense, the story of your own efforts. In 1941, surrounded by a world in flames, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the first peacetime conscription bill in our nation's history. The measure brought thousands of young Americans into the armed forces as these were expanded to keep the nation's defenses prepared for any threat that might arise. The enormous concentration of men at great installations across the country had a staggering impact upon their small neighboring communities. Civilian populations of these communities were often outnumbered. Facilities for off-post diversion and recreation were swamped by the new demands, frequently were non-existent. For the young servicemen off-duty, undesirable and even dangerous outlets for his leisure hours were often the only outlets available. <laughs> 
All too often, the situation made him a vulnerable target for unscrupulous elements. His health and safety were often endangered, and as a consequence, his usefulness to the services. On post, the army could provide for the needs of the off-duty soldier. Service clubs offered comfortable lounges for relaxation. They organized social programs for his diversion. Snack bars offered meeting places for him and his companions. Well-stocked libraries were at his disposal. Even on maneuvers, motion picture showings were regularly scheduled. Equipment and facilities were made available for a wide range of games and sports. On post two, army chapels could provide the serviceman with a religious affiliation that had been his back home. It was this role played by religion in the life of the individual and in the life of the community that offered the solution to the problems of the off post serviceman. In his home community, the church answered the spiritual needs of the individual. It also provided a significant part of his social activities and his associations. The churches embraced the entire nation and were responsive to community needs. They were therefore ideally suited to mobilizing resources and personal efforts on a nationwide scale. So it came about in 1941 that welfare organizations of the three major faiths were brought together in federation. With them, too, came two other nationally organized groups uniquely qualified to share the responsibility, the Salvation Army and the National Travelers Aid Association. These would be the United Services Organization, the civilian partner of the armed services. In the final month of that same year came our country's entry into the maelstrom of war. With American manpower fully involved and being marshaled in ever-growing numbers, USO's morale-boosting efforts had to meet new demands. In addition to serving the soldier at home, the USO had to follow the forces wherever they might be engaged. Canteens were opened in larger cities around the world. There, servicemen were usually stationed in great numbers. There, combat troops on leave would seek rest and diversion. To troops in the field, USO brought the talents of popular entertainers from stage, screen, and radio, as well as figures in the world of sports. Warmly welcomed by the serviceman, these entertainments captured the imagination of the public at home. USO show became a part of America's everyday vocabulary. By mid-1944, our ultimate victory was well in sight. Nazi Germany was crumbling. Within another year, history would ring down the curtain on the final act. had ended. Now with demobilization, the focus of public interest centered on a return to the ways of peace. It was to be, and still is, an uneasy peace. And so USO's responsibilities have not diminished. To the hundreds of thousands of troops in occupied territory and far off outposts, USO shows continued to bring entertainment and cheer. 
Here was fun, plus a healthy reminder that despite distances, the servicemen were still part of the American community. They had not been forgotten. Then, in 1950, came the Korean War. Interruption of the uneasy peace once again brought public awareness of the USO's role in helping maintain the serviceman's morale. Popular and well-publicized, USO shows are nevertheless only a small part of the job. And it is a job that has become increasingly complex since the end of Korean hostilities. Throughout these years, our manpower has had to be deployed in smaller units over a greater area of the world's surface. The far north, Alaska, the Arctic Circle, Iceland, Army men, and women too, are at posts in the Orient and the Near East. Units of our Navy and Air Force share in these globe-girdling activities. countless installations throughout the world and at home, wherever possible, all these must be served. Overseas, the man in uniform, an easy prey to loneliness, may understandably consider himself the forgotten man. Even at home, in a nation at peace, Public apathy, plus feeling conspicuous, makes the uniformed man vulnerable to those same feelings. The new recruit may even question the fate that has separated him from his home community while his contemporaries continue in their civilian pursuits. It is in just these areas of morale that the larger part of USO's job is being done. How well it is being done is best told by the new recruit You'll want to hear from him direct, for after all, he is your son, your neighbor, perhaps a friend or relative. He may even be yourself. I guess I'm all of those men, and I'm from every corner of these United States. Its cities, its towns, its farmlands. I'm from every kind of background you can name, and I'm from all the races, colors, and nationalities that ever found their way to these shores. I'm the man who's going to be made into a fighting man, ready and able to defend you, myself, all of us from trouble, when and if it comes. In the beginning, it's pretty strange. I mean, just being away from everything you've ever known. Then the army starts shaping, or maybe it's reshaping us. Lots of us live too soft, but it doesn't take the army long to toughen up those bodies. The old brain gets exercised too, learning a lot of subjects we'd never even known were part of army training. Most important, of course, is learning the basic business of soldiering. Discipline, responsibility, teamwork. Mastering all the equipment and all the weapons a fighting man has to use. Before we ever get to specialize in any branch, we've had plenty of opportunity to know what the real thing may be. We're ready. It's rough, hard work. But the toughest part can be something I never even thought about. Something personal. I'll tell you about it. Soldiering doesn't always go on round the clock, seven days a week. 
Man has time to get away from his post. We're expected to. The army figures that holding on to the old civilian ties is important, important for morale. To me, that means holding on to the feeling that I'm still a neighbor in good standing. We all feel that way. Whether it's just a pass for a few hours or a couple of weeks leave, we head for that civilian world. And that's when it hits you. You're a stranger, whether it's a big city or a small town near the post. Whether it's 20 miles from your hometown or thousands. You're a stranger and that can be rough. I said, can be. You see, it all depends on how long it takes us to discover the USO. My pals and I were lucky. Right there in the railroad station was that hello neighbor sign. Mighty welcome too when train schedules and timetables need a little straightening out. In the bigger stations, we may even have our own private waiting room. And if the stopover is long enough, USO gives us the dope on how and where to spend it. Want to knock off a letter to the folks? Want to catch some shut-eye? You can. And by the way, I never had any neighbors back home who offered a personal waking up service. Comes in real handy because trains won't wait. And if you're on your way back from leave, you wouldn't want to be late and disappoint the sergeant. Some lounges even help a man sharpen up between train connections. I'd call that service too. In most towns near the big posts, there's a USO lounge or club and we learn to head for them. Some of them even have dormitories or rooms for servicemen. That means all servicemen, not just army. Some places, particularly the big cities, USO arranges for hotel rooms and it's scaled down rates. Saves tramping around looking for a place to stay. Saves those dollars too. Neighborly, I'd say. And speaking of neighbors, in the smaller towns, the USO brings them to you. They stage dances, and the girls, well, they're the same kind you knew back home. The USO manages that through local clubs and churches. They even organize programs of sports and hobbies. Some places, they get local churches and clubs to put on shows. More fun than just walking around waiting for the town's one movie house to open. Getting acquainted with the town's people gives us another way to hold on to civilian life. Not to mention the home touch and, oh brother, home cooking. That reminds me, plenty of older career soldiers want their families close by. USO helps locate them in housing near their posts. During a housing shortage, that can be a real morale booster. Most servicemen look forward to dropping in on the big towns. New York, Chicago, LA. Cities they've always wanted to see. USO is there too. Of course, in the big cities, they can't bring the neighbors to us. So what do they do? Easy. They work it out so that we go to the neighbors. That simple. They arrange with dozens of churches, clubs, and social groups to put on dances or get-togethers just staged for us. You know what? People in big towns are just like the ones at home. 
I guess I never knew I had so many neighbors till USO showed me. And what a system they have in the cities for seeing that we have all the fun we want. Tickets for free to most of the shows. An arrangement worked out by USO with the theaters. That goes for the big radio and TV stations too. There's a real bang in seeing what goes on behind the scenes. Then there are tickets for sports events, yours for the asking, or even without asking. And that includes major league ball games too. USO will hand out all the directions you need if you want to do some independent sightseeing. But if it's your first trip, you'll probably want the VIP treatment. A guided tour, all your own. It's yours. Maybe you do end up with a stiff neck and aching doggies, but what of it? It's been worth every minute of it. There are tickets, too, for the regular bus tours and boat rides. The price? Nothing at all, thanks to those people at USO. What goes for small towns and cities here at home goes for all those far-off places where I serve. You must have seen that slogan, USO, wherever they go. It's true. And you can bet I'm glad about that. Wherever it's possible, USO has lounges or arranged for local facilities that add up to the same thing. They even have staffs that speak our language. And so, all over the world, it's the same story. The same big smile hospitality from trained workers and the local volunteers who offer a helping hand. The same home-brewed coffee and soft drinks on the house. Snacks, too for next to nothing. The same facilities, too, for getting acquainted with places that were just names on a map. Like geography, history comes to life, too. Those USO guides can take credit for taking over where school left off. At least they did for me, and that probably goes for a lot of other men. Come to think of it, I'll bet the USO never figured they were offering education along with their other services. If we want to, and most of us do, we can look behind the scenes, get to know how other people work. Take a simple thing like a rug. Well, it isn't simple. I never knew the kind of work went into one. It gives you a healthy respect for the other fella. Maybe we can make a better automobile, but native crafts take real know-how, too. But most important to most of us, USO opens doors for us into private homes, the same as they do in the States. Home cooking tastes good to me, whether it's a New England boiled dinner or its Korean cousin. And of course, I'm still learning that, in spite of differences in customs and language, I've got neighbors all over the world. Where foreign money gets to be too much for a man's arithmetic, USO sets up money-changing offices. That takes the arithmetic out of it and guarantees a fair shake. It's the same all over the world. Why, there are men serving in Japan who get to know Tokyo, Osaka, and Yokohama as well as they know their own hometowns, thanks to USO. Some servicemen even find a lot of the mystery taken out of the mysterious East. 
and come to know that the differences between the people here and back home are mostly on the surface. USO manages that through building people-to-people -people relations. Now you take Greece. First, a guided tour, then a chance to meet a few families, and the first thing you know, the service man on the shore leave is finding the same kind of fun in Athens, Greece, as he would in Athens, Georgia. Along with fun, he learns at first hand that his new neighbors are mighty proud of their history and that some of his own traditions and ideals came from that same old culture. That's a big boost for understanding and friendship. Some places, too, a man gets to understand the religious practices of his new neighbors. More understanding and so greater friendship. Overseas, too, the USO tries to match the other services they provide at home. If it's brain stretch you want, some of their bigger clubs have libraries. And of course, just as at home, there are the dances, dates, and entertainment to make Manila or Munich feel pretty much like Wichita or Amarillo. There's even room in the USO programs for the rugged individualist who just needs a little assist and he'll furnish his own fun. Or maybe all you want is a place in the sun while you forget worldly cares. Some of those worldly cares, like a ripped shirt, will be taken over by USO's volunteer workers. Those friends we make overseas get to be as close as the ones at home. And even where there are differences, we find the differences shrinking. You might say that by boosting our morale through personal contacts, USO is also doing a world of a job building friendship for us. I mean the whole country. Sort of a round the world goodwill ambassador. Round the world, that's where I serve. But I don't count the miles because miles don't count. Home is any further away than the nearest USO club or lounge. The USO story is your own if you've given of your time and effort to its activities. It is your own if you contribute to state, united, or community chest funds. USO receives no financial aid from the government. It is wholly yours, the civilian partner of the nation's armed forces. The big picture is an official report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the Department of the Army in cooperation with this station.